Hello, good evening and welcome to your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. This is Business Focus. My name is Pa Asari. Thanks very much for making a date with us on today's program. Now, with over 90 exhibitors and thousands of patrons, the second edition of the Media General Startup Fair and Funding Summit was a huge success. The fair got the whole of the Ashanti region busy between Friday, May 17 and Sunday, May 19. My name is Pa Asari, and this is Business Business Focus, your most authoritative business analysis program here on TV3. Uh, tonight, we're going to be focusing our lenses on the startup fair and funding summit that was hugely patronized. Of course, we've got the movie segment as well as analysis of the stock market plus commodities markets here on Business Focus. But we'll start with, uh, with summaries of business news making headlines. All right, so you're welcome back to Business Focus. This is your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. My name is Park Wissi uh, We're live on Facebook. We're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments, and suggestions on any of our uh, stories uh, this evening. If you feel strongly about uh, the startup fair, which was held over the weekend, uh, feel free to send your views and suggestions, uh, if any, to any of our social media feed. Our handle is TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, so, uh, you know, the Media General Startup Fair and Summit was held in Kumasi over the weekend. Uh, there was a lot of uh, excitement. We had startup businesses come to uh, showcase their uh, goods and services uh, to the general public. And uh, there was a lot to learn. Uh, we also had exhibitors. We also had, uh, uh, you know, people out there. Uh, angel investors were coming to also uh, look, look at the possible the possibility of teaming up with these startup business and also uh, subsequently investing in their businesses. Tonight, we've been joined in the studio by head of business Dex at Media General. He was also the coordinator of the uh, summit. Alfred Okanse, thank you, Alfred, for your time. Uh, we've got a chief executive officer of Quick Angels, Richard Quay, and also the branch and corporate communications manager for Quick Angels, Veronica Ofosu Hima Owusuansa. Thank you very much, gentlemen and lady. Uh, good to see you. So you guys were in Kumasi over the weekend. The biggest yeah program i guess yeah, in Accra was a it was a vgma <laughs> and in kumasi obviously it was a, a media general startup fair That's summit great. alfred tell us where your expectations met it was met and actually we went beyond our expectations i mm. must say and uh great evening to you and uh, very cherished viewers as always um we went into this program and and uh, you know you're part of the desk as well so uh, during the planning stages remember we we're pitching the numbers at between 50 and 55 exhibitors were expecting but we got on the ground and the uh level of enthusiasm was very high in Kumasi, uh much beyond what we had already known because proud to this shifted the research um, three months day, so we understand exactly what the startup ecosystem is and, and the SME system is in, in Kumasi. So we know what when to do it and, and where exactly to do it, which we have to answer all these questions before moving in. Um, so when we, we got to know that Kumasi yes, is, is price sensitive, that market is price sensitive, um, you know, they look out some other things and, um, you know, not, not many people are very enthused about this. Then we had very measured expectations, but then, as I, I keep saying, there's always an exception to the rule. Uh, that rule was, was really overtaking today, I mean, over the weekend, and uh, we had close to 95 uh, exhibitors beyond the 50 that we were even looking at. So. Mm. It was an amazing experience. Mm, right, uh, and for, for the viewers out there who were not able to uh, visit us in Kumasi for the Startup uh, Fair and Summit, we'll bring you pictures of exactly what transpired there over the weekend from Friday up till uh, Sunday. But we've also got in the studio the Chief Executive Officer of uh, uh, Quick Angels. Um, they just launched their business a couple of days ago and they decided to come team up with us here at Media General. I'll start with the Chief Executive, uh, Mr. Richard Quay. So why did you decide to partner us for this project okay so i think that the initiative tv3 has to um, actually launch this um, fair um has to do with meeting entrepreneurs and 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 um, people with their businesses and young businesses and as angel investors i think that it's an opportunity for us to meet these people okay first hand and let them know that as angel investors we are in a good position to partner them with equity 
so that they'll be able to expand their business along the way. Mm. I'll come back to you. For so much, you were in Kumase. Yeah. Uh, you were there with Alfred all throughout, uh, from the start of the program to we ended. What did you notice during the fair? Um, to begin with, let me again commend Media General for this initiative. I think it's great. It was well targeted, especially at the landscape that's at the Kumasi. I think you had your first one in Accra. Mm. There is this saying that uh, goes, success is when opportunity meets preparation. I think um, um, it was a great opportunity for opportunity for the startups or entrepreneurs that we met. It's the, the whole ent the entire program was a success. I'm saying this because they were prepared, we were prepared, and it was like they were looking for an opportunity, and we were there as an opportunity for them, basically. So um, <clears throat> it's like startups or entrepreneurs who were ready um, for some people to fund or some investors to fund them, and there they go, they saw Quick Angels Limited. Mm. For us, I think it was a great um, a move for us to be a part because there are our targets. We were, we've been looking out for these entrepreneurs who have projects or businesses that have prospects and it's economically viable that we can also contribute our quota in a way to the country. Mm. And as Quick Angels, this was a good one for us to be a part so of. So did you catch some fishes? Yes. You know, initially, um, there were a few things they didn't understand. When we started the first day, people were coming to us. They wanted to know what we are about, whether we are loan, we are finance house, we are a bank. They realized we are not a bank. We are not savings and loans. We are no microfinance. We are just angel investors, and we are actually first of its kind in Ghana. And what basically we do is to give them fun if we realize that your project, your business is economically viable or has prospect. And that was the amazing part of it, because it looked like most of the entrepreneurs that we met there really needed funding really needed funding and we were not seeking to take back any money from them that is if we tend to i mean and partner them all we would do is at the long haul or long ground partner them as a business so we are not taking any money from you and not taking any deposit you are not putting any collateral that was an amazing part of it for them it was a fresh was a fresh something in their minds this is the first of its kind in ghana that they thought is a great initiative so mm. it was a meet and greet kind of where mm. they were ready we were ready we need that we need them they also needed us and we met and it was more of a success something right uh, alfred I'll, I'll come back to you shortly but richard i am really much interested in this whole idea of angel investor uh, we have a lot of this in other advanced countries in in the europe's uh, in south america all these countries uh, we've never really had much of that in ghana and you have decided to basically support startup businesses. You claim you have a lot of ideal funds available to support individuals who have viable business ideas. The question is, I mean, in this era where we have high non-performing loans, even uh, the traditional banking sector is, is having a lot of difficulties uh, retrieving monies that they've lent out to people, you want to occupy this space. Where are you getting all the money from? Okay. Um, first of all, let me let you know that you see, angel investors are affluent individuals mm. who want to use their own ideal funds to support business entrepreneurs and young businesses. So, as angel investors, we know that it is very risky um, venture for us to undertake. But you see, if you look at our economy here, you would realize that many young entrepreneurs and businesses with great business ideas and, and, and know-how, lack funding, okay, lack funding. And in our economy here, it's always about banks, it's always about loans, it's always about debt financing. And I can confidently tell you that in most advanced countries, uh, when entrepreneurs have brilliant ideas, they don't go to banks. They go and pitch their business ideas to angel investors, to investors who have ideal funds to invest into their business. And I thought that in our country, that is lacking here. And it's very worrying because I'm an entrepreneur myself. And when I started my business, I went around looking for funding to support my business. That never came my way. Okay, so I went through difficult times to be able to build my business to where it is today. And so I, I said to myself that somewhere along the line, I'm going to prepare myself adequately to be able to fill this gap in, in our economy. And that is where I have come today to do this. I can confidently tell you that I am well prepared. I have built enough idle funds ready to take the How risk. much of idle funds have you built to lend out? Enough to be able to support How a much? lot of people. Enough. How much? Enough. 
Enough. How much? Enough. Let me tell you something. You'll be wondering how I'm going to do this. But you see, currently, I have a primary business that is called Quick Credit. This company is a credit company. I have been providing credit or debt financing to tens of thousands of Ghanaians over the decade. This I have done without taking a peswa from any of them. As I speak with you close of business today, my company, which is Quick Credit, has over 25,000 active Ghanaians that have benefited from short-term credit from my company without having to deposit any peswa or even having to do an investment or savings with my company. So this is something I've done over the years. So I you've received feedback from uh, Veronica and the team that went to Kumasi, yes. haven't you? Yes, I have received uh, feedback. And they've tapped into some businesses that they want to support? Yes. How many of them? Trust me, we've had a lot of calls coming in from Kumasi today and in the office. A lot of people have been calling to ask us to even explain more about what our services are. You know, angel investing, as you said, is, is, is not present here in our country. And so a lot of people really want more clarification. That is why I want to thank TV3 for giving us the opportunity to, to partner and sponsor and be, be beside you to, to, to partner these uh, entrepreneurs, okay? We've been able to use the opportunity to, to explain more of what we are doing and how we intend to partner them and assist them in the long run. Okay. So they, they have called. Right. Okay. Sh I'll, I'll come back to you shortly. Alfred, when we return from uh, this little... Uh, so, f okay, I said for those of you who are not in Kumasi, we'll just give you a mental picture of what you missed out. And then we'll return and Alfred will tell us exactly what was different from... Uh, what was different about this, this year's uh, startup fair. You know, we have the very first one in Accra here. So this was the second one and it was the first of its kind in Kumasi. So uh, let's give you just a highlight of what you missed uh, in Kumasi. The fair started on Friday, May 17, saw some brisk activities and networking. At Media General, we have an abiding commitment to helping young native businesses thrive. Our faith for creating jobs and equal opportunities in the youth is immense. Today, our footprints in this region includes Akuma. 87.9, right opposite the small. And soon, Onia TV will up the standard of television viewing also in this region. Ten exhibitors who participated were allocated 200,000 cities funding by the Microfinance and Small Loans Center, Maslock, at the funding summit. First ten, yeah, yeah. aside that, office no will be able to apply. And just a ten on Kuma, or a seramo say, and crop form do musica by Mamma Samon for Indigano. TV tra or more to a muache in your market, yes, no. Mosumon Bua, Nand Eduma Passe, and you're sustainable. I'm telling you, I use a TV tra for an American. They be America, they are not perfect, but they are doing so much work. They be a musician and she say, yeah, about Bua or mine. That is what they do. Recently, when the city was a problem. They gave Omo um, air time. Omo um, uno air no who's half. Ne boa de papa. Quick angels and bond savings and loans gave insight to help startups and SMEs position themselves for funding, innovation, and growth. Uh, Maslock CEO there, Stephen Amwa, uh, giving a lot of applause to TV3, and you've also got to give us applause, you know, for, uh, you know, s uh, essentially organizing this all-important program to uh, allow startups uh, to essentially showcase their goods and services to the entire world. Uh, Alfred, what was different about, uh, you know, what we did in Kumasi when you compare that to what we did in Accra earlier? Okay, so um, three things. One is the the venue, because um, the Accra that's the first edition we were tinkering with the whole idea and so um, yes we, we had to push forward to it believe that it was going to happen and then as it were learn our lessons from that particular experience so the venue for this one was a commercial space uh, being the mall car park the Kumasi City Mall car park which obviously has some people coming in and out doing the shopping but I must say that over the weekend the last three days um, it, it, the, the population that goes into the mall and back increased 
according to the mall itself. So this is not we, um, you know, as to where patting ourselves at the back without any evidence. So they said that they had recorded some more people coming in, which was expected anyway, because clearly we're talking about it on television. And if, if people are seeing and watching mm. and seeing exactly what's happening, they want to know exactly what's going on in there. That was it. The second bit also was that we had enough time to do a lot more of the feasibility studies mm. to better understand the market we're going into, because mm. Accra, we, we are in Accra. We've been hosting startups. I mean, you over the last four, five years, mm. um, giving startups uh, free airtime on the mover segment. So we have a certain synergy with them. We could easily relate and identify mm. them. But the right. commercial market, we were almost mm. new there, mm. even though they knew about the fact that something had happened in Accra. Right. So going into the commercial market, we had to learn more. Mm. We had to be able to get ourselves apprised with a lot of the elements. Mm. And of there. course, we have a team back in Kumasi, Kofi Dranfe and the rest, who did a lot of groundwork for so us. So they actually yeah. went ahead of us, mm. did an, a lot of the grounds for Kofi Dranfer, Amos, um, Ernest, um, Ibrahim, Abubakar, Beatrice, Pio Gabra, mm. they ahead of the, 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 the summit and then the fair went ahead to engage some of these startups and SMEs there right. to better understand what their difficulties are. So that right. this fair will not just be one of the many exhibitions they've been to, yeah. but we're targeting specific problems that and challenges they are facing, and we bring solution to. All right, them. I'll come back to you on, on what's next uh, mm -hmm. after Accra Commerce and what's next. Uh, Vero, so how many businesses did you uh, target? We targeted everybody, but at the end of the day, the calls coming in and the feedback is uncountable. Mm. Uh, it's uncountable. I mean, the fact that they even want us to establish an office in Kumasi, some are actually coming to Accra tomorrow because they want to meet with the business consultants so they can actually spell out their plans and business um, 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 business plans to them and know the way forward. I mean, it's, 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 it's been exciting. Are uh, you willing say. to support them? Yes, like I said, once your, your business has prospect, these are my two words, once it has prospect and it's economically viable, why not? We want, we Quick Angels Limited are aimed to help Ghanaians. We want to help entrepreneurs because of this um, enormous unemployment rate in Ghana. I think angel investors are the right people to go as an entrepreneur, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, Richard, so um, what's the range? How much are you willing to give out to people? What's the least amount you're willing to give out to people? We, we, we don't have limits, okay? We don't have limits. We are willing to support entrepreneurs and businesses of all kinds, okay? Once you are able to pitch your business ideas to us and it looks economically viable and has very big future prospects, trust me, we are going to sign off the check to your business. Okay, so how is this going to be done? Is it going to be done in phases? Do you have a, a period where you're going to invite all the businesses to come and pitch? And no. then after you would uh, hand over your money and checks. No, we're not doing it in group. You come to our office and talk to. I mean, meet a business consultant individually, and then you 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 you, you pitch your business idea to us. So we don't group people up, okay? And also we sometimes do it on phone. So people in Kumasi, for instance, that called the office today, we did a lot of consultation with them via the phone, and 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 it was looking great. Some of them have already sent their business uh, plan and business proposal to us via email. And, we are working and when you say you don't, you don't have a limit, are you saying that you've got infinite resources? Not at all. I mean, even government of Ghana don't have infinite finances. So you definitely so must have, no, a, we don't a have a limit. We, we really don't so have a limit. But what, what we are saying is that, mm. you see, once the business is viable, once the business is viable, and it is, it, is, it is a brilliant and smart business idea. You've got as much as a, a million dollars to spend on a business that's viable? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's for sure. I see. We are ready to write a check of one million dollars. I mean, once that is uh, the business is 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 in the position to accommodate mm -hmm. that. Uh, and you're going to take equity record. in that business. We are going to take equity. You know, we, we are not a financial institution. We are mm. not here to give loans or give debt financing. Like I said, mm. the problem in our, con in our economy here has to do with debt financing. Mm. Entrepreneurs are not able to uh, win equity investment into their business. Mm. And and back with you, you see, um, equity investment is very important in building. The, 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 the entrepreneurial uh, structures in our country. If, if, if a young man graduates from the university 
or, or, or let's say learn the trade and wants to become an entrepreneur in our current economy we have here, where does this person go? Have you asked yourself that question? There is nowhere the person will go because you see, if the person goes to the bank, banks are working with people's deposits and people's investment. Mm -hmm. They don't want to take a lot of risks by investing in unproven businesses and unproven business ideas. So all over the place, you get Ghanaians, entrepreneurs, who are saying, potential entrepreneurs saying that they have nowhere to go, no, there, there are scarcity of investors in the economy. And that is a problem. But like you said, in advanced economies, there are thousands of Indian investors who are ready to invest their idle funds into, into the dreams, into the vision and the ideas of, of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And that is a gap that we have come to fill. And you see, we, we don't only want to do this alone, but I want to use this opportunity to also reach out to affluent Ghanaians out there, that this is something that we all have to do together. Those of us with idle funds, those of us who have the resources to be able to support our young entrepreneurs coming up. We may very well be building next a generation of champion entrepreneurs. We don't have to keep our idle funds in the account. We've got to bring it out and do as others are doing in these advanced economies to raise these entrepreneurs out. It is going to pay off in the long run and it's going to help generate the imaginary jobs and businesses we need in our country and ultimately propel national development mm. and economic growth. Mm. Okay. Very well spoken. Uh, very. you want to say something quickly? Yeah. Um you know, in as much as we are ready to help entrepreneurs and startups or young businesses, that is not to say one just gets up and come to say, I have this idea. That's, that's why initially I said, or earlier I mm. said, we have consultants who will go through your project, know the prospect and how viable it is before we help. So it's a risk. But we also go through processes to ascertain, I mean, the viability of the business project or your idea before we actually fund. So You've it's got not project everybody, analysis and all yes, that. Mm. It, it yes. goes through a st every, about four or five stages before finally whatever the check CEO has to be signed you know, has, has to, to sign, sign off. off. Exactly. So you don't just get up to say because um, Quick and Just Limited came out to say A, B, C, D. Just any idea you put them. It will go through a process. And so within which period should we begin to uh, measure your, your, your success as a business? I think that um, give us six months. Oh, just six just months. Six months. You would have to come back and 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 see what we have done in the economy. As it stands now, there are a lot of good deals that have come through to our office, and I was personally amazed that within a short period of time, uh, Ghanaians are are, are are ready and willing to to bring their business but ideas. But everybody's ready to come for money. Yes, but you see, there has always been a misconception out there. Until we set up this company, I never knew that uh, that, mis that, that uh, conception was, was false. You know, there's been misconception out there that Ghanaian entrepreneurs are not willing to, to share equity. They are not willing to get other investors on board. They want to own everything all alone by themselves, okay? But that has proven to be false because, I'm, I'm, to, to be honest with you, today alone, we had over, over, over 50 prospective uh, uh, businesses and entrepreneurs coming into our office with, 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 with wonderful business ideas. I must say that not all of them were smart, sexy, and brilliant, but at least I have personally gone through what has happened in the office with I've seen about 15 brilliant uh, business ideas that uh, all things being equal, once we have been able to sit down and negotiate on certain terms and everything is okay, we would be more than willing to, to write check into these businesses. Right. Alfred, uh, so what's next? Yeah, what's next? Um, um, before I get into that, let me just say the, uh, the first edition we had the Venture Capital Trust Fund support us, but it's very interesting the dynamics that um, Quick Angels brings on board this mm. um, as we conclude. On, on my part, let me just say thank you to Bond Savings and Loans as well for supporting. But Quick Angels came in as well with, with the twist that look, you know, as investors, they are not really looking out for. Um, a commercial viability as it were of, of your or a commercial interest in your business they just want you to help help you to expand for me that approach also brought about a different feeling for the entrepreneurs and the SMEs that gathered there because you know those days when you and I were in school they say that as an as an entrepreneur you raise money through friends family and fools I mean these days nobody is a fool anymore because there's education and information abounds on the internet so that's where the angel investor will come in and then solve that particular problem and so for us putting this fair together two things solving problems as it as, as in giving exposure to the to the uh, uh, SMEs and the startups and then also connecting them with the right people to help them to solve the problems mm. so going forward We've had calls from especially the three regions of the north, um, 
we're still assessing that and as i said earlier we don't just move into a space we need to apprise ourselves with the right data so that we know that as we're going in we're making the right decision and we're going to get the right people also supporting the vision this is not a commercial you know intervention for us we're not making any money as media general um you know because if you quantify the airtime we're giving out to these startups and smes definitely cannot match up to the revenue that we we, we, we get so it's more of a corporate social responsibility from our perspective to help grow businesses in ghana because the startup of today is a big business of tomorrow and that's what we believe in so tamale is on the radar Takrade already we have the western trade fair organized by connect fm also we have it on the radar as well to to also help in making it as big as we all expect it to be but one thing we can say for our cry is that the, the last week of November or the first week of December this year, the Accra second edition of the Startup Fair Accra edition will come off. All but right, so let's that, right. We'll sorry, uh, let's yeah. look at some of the exhibitors at um, uh, the, sh uh, the, the 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 summit over the weekend and see what they had to to show the world. Some exhibitors share their views after the fair. There, there's this big man I wanted to do business with for over the years. When they, they started playing the advert and he saw me, he called me. And when I went, we sat down. And I was so surprised that that little uh, visual that he saw could turn the fortune of my business. I think I want to thank TV3 for that. Yesterday, I made the gooses. But something pushed me to go and look. For my phone, make us share, yeah. 18 missed calls. Hey! The far first call, no? What did make say, come on, madam, I pay order. Order me, me did call no to another one. Just so, bia, pempa, boy. Nipa, baby, at the oil frame, a online business, it's a baby engine. I have been moving, say, a scam. When you're about to be three program, you say, no. I'm on for who's the oil frame, a representative, or Hano. Omehun said it's not a scam, it's a rare business. A cross-section of the general public enjoyed discounts, free eye screening and makeup. All right, so you heard it from them. I'm not the one speaking. You heard them. You heard them right. If you want authenticity to your business, the only place to, to, to exhibit is on TV3. They, we will give you that stamp, that approval uh, to the world. Uh, so quickly... Uh, you, you know the experience, <laughs> uh, the fact that when they take Grace, uh, Eben, and Ibrahim, mm. uh, Beatrice, who are on the ground, when they take the microphone to them and the, 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 they, they do their advertisement, like they talk about their product, mm. put out their phone lines, mm. their phone numbers. The mm. moment they move to the next person, mm. Calls yes. start coming in, so that experience for them was and, nostalgic. And, and I mean, is big, really, absolutely. I mean, you know, so they 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 had it. Okay, I just put out my number, mm. and I'm having like 25 mm. missed calls mm. in a minute. So well, I'm sure Joy has on? shared his experience with you, already absolutely, on the platform, on, and how everybody's talking about him in the mover segment, and and he's making <laughs> it so big. He's eating a lot of food. He's thanking you for you. being on the business <laughs> desk. <laughs> Gee, yeah, 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 Vero, you know, what so. what do you expect going forward? Um, I think Quick Angels Limited is ready to partner TV3, your media general, on subsequent... You're giving us some more cash? Entrepreneurs. I mean, You're giving us some more cash? You know, um, no, I'll this, pose this question to Richard. So, you know, um, this is like a CSR, and our kind of business is also like a CSR, like corporate social responsibility. Mm. Because basically, we are giving out something that people or some section of the um, public have been waiting for, basically. So mm. I think partnering you in the subsequent ones will be great, and we are ever ready to do that together with Richard, you. Richard, you're going to pop some more cards to TV3? We'll, we'll, we'll do our best. Okay. Well, well, how much? <laughs> we'll discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alfred, I, I just thought, yeah. what, you've been installed a chief, right? No, this, this is a gift from one of the... <laughs> Exhibitors. Oh, so I thought you were you know, the, the new day. chief of. Uh, I know what you're trying Dang to Bay. do, but this is <laughs> this is uh, a gift from one of them. I mean, we, wow. we had a number of them doing the Amazing. beats and and. You didn't get anything sandals. from me. <laughs> There's something coming up for you. Uh, we yeah, made, yeah. We yeah. placed a few orders okay. Um, okay. on ground mm. during the fair because mm. we were giving some massive discounts. All of this, the products they bought, they brought were bought off right. and finished, so they had to get more orders from people. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Alfred Okante uh, led that team uh, in Kumasi to organize the, the fair and summit. Uh, it was the first of its kind in Kumasi. He's also uh, the head of the business desk here at TV3. Veronica is head of corporate communications at Angel. Um, Quick Angels Limited, and then of course uh, Richard Quay is the 
Chief Executive Officer and the founder of Quick Angels Limited. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You want to say something? Very quickly, yeah. I'll just reiterate the, the um, thanking the, the team mm. who, who did all of this for right. the Kumasi team led mm. by Kofi Dudonfe and right here as well, you, Tanam, Grace, We had uh, Ruben, our managing then, news editor. Yeah, absolutely, group The CEO, chief executive. We're all there. Right. Um, the general manager in charge of uh, the shared services here. Mm. And also, Emmanuel Ajiman of Onya FM. I mean, let me thank Onya FM as well. They give mm. us a lot of air time as well, just right. to make sure that the people, you know, Kumasi is Akuma. And so long as we're going to uh, outdoor Akuma very soon, we have to let them have a feeling right. of what we're bringing to them. All right, thank yeah. you very much, Alfred. So we're going to go in a short break. When we return on the Move It segment tonight on Business Focus, we share with you the story of 26 year old Esther Adjoa. Um, who's a chief executive officer of Salad Style, who believes entrepreneurship is all about starting with the little you have. With cooking as a hobby, she took advantage of that interest, coupled with a capital of just 150 CDs to set up Salad Style. We'll bring you that story later. Okay, um, I have our breakfast packages. Okay, what you want? Okay, that's fine. It all started when mother of 26-year-old Esther Adra Pinto Abaini, who runs a sandwich business at a 37 military hospital in Accra, included a few packages of salad made by her daughter on sale. The feedback was great from customers, especially patients and nurses, which convinced Esther to make cash out of it. First of all, I went based on pre-orders. Like if you want to call me in the morning, that means you have to call as early as 6 o'clock so that we can be able to do it on time and have it delivered to you on time. Because let's say the rider is going to 37 and he's left already and you call that you're at 37. There's going to be another wahala, like another thing altogether because I have to be done for a rider to come and pick it up from my place to 37. Meanwhile, the one that left already could have sent it while he was going. With 150 Ghana cities, the business plan of Seller Style came to fruition. Esther Adra Pinto Abani has passion for cooking, and this business, she explains, comes as God's calling. I have a 30 series package, a 40 series package, a 130, 250, but then I work based on the customers and budget, so if you have 50 CV, 60 CV, 70 CV, 80 CV, I can fix you up. My customers are not too difficult. I hardly get difficult customers. Maybe something goes wrong, or if we don't deliver on time, then the person will talk, talk, talk. But in the long run, a bar, the person is going to enjoy it. So it's going to calm the person down. With a staff strength of nine, which includes delivery riders, Esther is bent on expanding her business scope to open more unemployed youth. And so when Esther was doing the combination, I was watching vividly. And so I just want to give it a try and see if maybe I'll be good. Maybe I might also you know, venture into something salad. Let me just give it a try. Esther, I want to help you. Sure. This is not bad. Mm -hmm. Esther, this is not bad. 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 This is not She's also determined to ensure Salah Star remains a household name when it comes to breakfast in the country. If I should get a job, I think I can actually combine the two, so it's not going to be a problem. Because what I do is based on pre-orders, so I know I have maybe 20 orders in the morning, just wake up early and do, because that's what I was doing back then when I was doing my national service, so I can combine the two. It's just tiring, but then I can combine the two.
well, well, well. And so this is one of Esther's motorcycles. She's got two actually, and she invested some 8,000 cities into it. Aside her motorcycles, she hires the services of other dispatch riders to do her delivery. She tells me the motorcycles, you know, makes her work easier and gives her that convenience she so much desires. Prices of breakfast, she tells me, starts from as low as 30 cities and usually content is determined by customers' preference, which may include pancake, sausage, drink, salad and sandwich. Entrepreneurship is not easy. It's difficult, but then it's achievable. So you just have to be patient and then enjoy the journey. And then if you want to start up your own business, just have um, passion for what you want to do. You should have passion for what you want to do. And then the little money you have, you can start your business with. You don't need too much money, you know. And then just make use of social media. It helps a lot. In a world where technology is changing every aspect of life, Esther says social media has come in handy to show the world what she's capable of doing. The way I like food, I think I should sign up for a cooking course aside my journalism career. But let's see how this one tastes. Chicken sausage? Okay. Wow. This is so nice. I'm not exaggerating, trust me, I'm not. But you see this here? It's a complete breakfast. It's going for 40 Ghana cities and it's got everything in there. It's got some side salad, it's got sandwich, it's got drink as well. And so if you're thinking of having breakfast, you're just a call away. Go on to social media, Instagram, and search for salad style. Place that order. Then you should deliver at your doorstep. What are you waiting for? So it's been a great time with Esther. And thanks for watching. Uh, we came to you from Madina Estates. And my name is Josh Quinn. I'm black and proud. Yeah, George Quinno, you are black and proud of eating every single day. Thank you. George Quinno just brought us the movie segment here on TV3. I'm back in studio now to do some analysis on the stock market as well as the commodities market. We'll find out what the price of gold cocoa has been and what the impact is on the local economy back here in Ghana. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Winslow Sakifio, he's been away for some time. Winslow, where have you been? Uh, work. <laughs> work? Yes. Okay, good to see you. So uh, tell us about, let's start with the stock market, the price of gold cocoa. What's happening in the... Okay, so uh, the stock market this year has in the commodities. I beg the commodities. Point, sorry. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, commodities. You know, crude uh, is facing a lot of pressure now mm -hmm. uh, because uh, virtually all the global happenings are uh, things that will push the prices of crude up. So we have tensions in the Middle East. There's sanctions on Iran and Venezuela, and uh, U.S. and China too are battling it out in their uh, trade war. So. A sort of pushing the price of crude up. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently, we are looking at 72.02, which is fairly high compared mm -hmm. to what we started the year mm -hmm. with. This year, crude has gained about 36 percent. That's a change in price, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not good for us down here, especially those of us who buy fuel for our vehicles, because it's likely to push the prices up. Mm -hmm. uh, for gold, we expected the tension to push gold prices, but it looks like because the dollar strength in the, it made gold of favorable investment for anybody outside the U.S. because mm. of the dollar issue. Mm. For cocoa, uh, ours is not too strong because uh, we have downgraded the output expectations from 900,000 tons to 850 uh, because of swollen shoot. So that's something that would impact our cocoa export going forward. Mm. On the commodities market, we know that uh the, the market, on the stock market, we know that the market experienced some bearishness over the past few months. Has it begun to pick up? Yes, uh, last week we saw the market uh, inching up slightly. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a negative nine return. Currently it's down to about 6.5, uh, negative still. And what is still accounting for this? Uh, it's still the bearish sentiment. You know, investors from last year, we had a spillover of the negative sentiment into this year. We we're expecting it to... Negative sentiment arising out of the banking crisis? Yes. Mm. And uh, it looks like uh, the course is not clear yet. We are still having issues with 
uh, some of the implementation. I mean, uh, a lot of investors are uncertain how things will pan out, especially given the kind of panic we but have. But we're in the told system. that the market had stabilized. We uh, we had had a lot of uh, booster in, in 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 terms of confidence in the Ghanaian economy uh, arising out of the banking sector reforms that had been taking place. Uh, there is some confidence, but it is not that significant to change the attitude of investors. So mm. investors are still uncertain. Most of them were waiting for first quarter results. Some came out good, but it didn't really take away that negative sentiment that is sort of hovering over the And market. how long is this going to last? Uh, we are in the second quarter, and it's likely it might go into the third quarter. So what are the best performance stocks as we speak? Uh, currently, we have to tell. Uh, that's doing quite well because of the crude prices. Normally, if crude prices are going up, we expect their margins to pick up. Uh, for the banking stocks, fundamentally, they are doing well, especially for the big banks. But mm. when you look at their performance on the stock market, it's mm. not doing too well. So we, we are likely to see the banks picking up going into the third quarter, which might boost uh, the stock market. I mm. know MTN too this year hasn't done so well, mm. and it's heavily weighted on the market. Mm. So it's sort of pushing the market down. Mm. So what should we expect in the ensuing weeks? Uh, we expect the big banks to at least push the market up a bit because we are seeing positive sentiment returning to uh, that sector. Mm. Uh, we also expected the manufacturing sector to do well, but so far, fundamentally, they have everything to make them do well. Uh, prices are okay, inflation is stable, we have any supplies that are good, the CD is currently stable, but we don't see that happening on the market. Investors still think they are headwinds ahead. Mm. It's good you talk about the city. Let's talk a bit about it. Uh, uh, we don't have the negative sentiments that was uh, expressed some, can, some time back. Uh, things appear to have stabilized over a period. Yes, I, I think the central bank came in strongly. And uh, strongly, they gave an indication that they were ready to prop up the CD if they need be. And that alone they gave the market some comfort. And what, what are the likely ramifications of the foreign exchange control measures that were recently announced by the central bank? We know this is not the very first time, uh, sometime in 2015 or so, yeah. it was introduced and we know what happened and it appears to have come back. Implementation, yes, some say, uh, will be a major difficulty. Yes, that is it's implementation because mm. when you start implementing, Enforcing it will be difficult, especially in our kind of market. You know, the black market in Ghana is very significant, so enforcing it will be a bit difficult. But I think with the kind of inspections they plan to do, it might curb it down a bit, but I don't think it would have a significant impact on it. Mm. Winslow, always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks very much for joining us in studio. Uh, that's Winslow Sakifio. He works with... Uh, Oh, help me out. First Bank, First Bank Financial, Financial Services. Services. Thanks, Weasel, for your time. And thanks also for making a date with us here on your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. Uh, my name is Spark Wiesel. Sorry. Uh, thanks to the production team and to all of you. Uh, God willing, same time next week, we'll come your way with yet another edition of your favorite program, uh, Business Focus, uh, live here on TV3. Stand by now for News 360 with Alfred and Natalie.